Everyone, this session today is on, or at least for now, is on prep your data. <clears throat> First, we wanted to say thank you. We know you have a lot of sessions you can choose from, and we appreciate you taking the time to come to our session today to learn a little bit more on what we have to tell you. And sincerely from all of us at Tableau, thank you for coming to Tableau Conference this year. You all make this for us, so um, in many languages, thank you. So a little bit about who we are because you're spending the next about an hour with us, 50 minutes or so. No. I'm Jeff Black, I'm on the top right. My role here at Tableau is I manage our uh, sales consultants, so the technical folks working with customers for our financial services vertical uh, in the US. Um, I hail from Pittsburgh, my family in the middle, my hobbies on the top right, primarily golf, and then really you know, work is not my challenge in life, it's my kids. And as you can see with my son in the bottom right, that's a, a, about nine paper towel rolls that he tore apart and made a bed out of. And I'm pretty cheap, so I picked all those up and there's still some sitting in my closet. So that's, that's what I'm up against. Jeremy. All right, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jeremy Walsh. I am a customer success manager here at Tableau. <clears throat> and what that means is that I come into a lot of organizations and I help establish things like COEs and COPs and just get everybody enabled with Tableau. Get them excited about that. I live in Massachusetts. I live on Cape Cod. Anybody from Massachusetts? Yes, Ooh. we are very excited today. <laughs> so, baseball game going on out there, if anybody knows about. Uh, I have a, uh, a wife and two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, this, this is going to be gonna good. Be <laughs> It's going to be a tough session, I can see. <laughs> uh, I have a wife and two kids uh, as well, just like Jeff. We spend a lot of time on the beach in the Jeep. Um, we take care of the dog, and uh, the kids wanted some fish, so I have a, a koi pond in the back. And uh, just want to say, you know, echo Jeff's sentiments. This is a privilege to have you here today. It really is. We've been doing this for uh, quite a few years, and we're always so appreciative of you coming to our session, but more importantly, to the Tableau conference and supporting Tableau, so that's terrific. But you, <clears throat> whoa, whoa, wait, wait a second. The one thing Jeff forgot to mention, one of the other characteristics that we are here, Jeff, here I have this here for you. Jeremy. We're gonna do this this way. This is how we're gonna do this. So Jeff, here, come here, go, come over here. Stand with a pose. We are prep chefs. Thank you for coming today. Enjoy the rest of your conference. It's great. All right, hold, just work with me here for just one second, okay? Does anybody recognize this giant photo on the wall? Anybody recognize this? Jambalaya. Uh, could be good, could be bad for you, I don't know. It depends on, on where you ate it, but this is a gorgeous, delicious meal, right? Yes, it sure is. And by the way, who thinks cooking is hard? Yeah, me too. Cooking can be hard, right? Cooking can be really hard. Look at what's in this. Shrimp. Uh, we've got some peppers in here. We've got rice in here. We've got all of these spices that we're supposed to put together. This andouille sauce that's in there. Crawfish, depending on where you are, right? That's a lot going into this beautiful representation here, right? And by the way, mm. you have to go out there and get all of this stuff. Right, my now wife, then girlfriend, when we lived in Washington, D.C., I tried so hard to make this so many times. Right, go out there, I didn't even know what andouille sausage was. Honestly, I got hot dogs and just put it in there. <laughs> right, so I had no idea, right? That's the whole point, that to get to this, it can be really, really hard. Absolutely. Blue Apron would have helped you, Jeremy. Blue Apron would have definitely been very helpful here. <laughs> you know what else is hard? <clears throat> Data preparation. Conceptually, it's the same thing. We're trying to do the same thing. Get this great masterful prediction at the end that we can use for consumption, right? Think of all of those ingredients that goes into jambalaya as something that we're just all different columns of the data that we're doing. You have to go get the data just like you have to go shopping for all that food and preparation and spices, same thing, right? So we thought we'd put a little spin on today's session and talk about how you're getting all that different data from IoT, from the house. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. It can be just as equally as hard as cooking a dinner. Yeah, so many of you are trying to get ready for the analysis today. Or you're a data steward or someone in IT getting your information ready for your constituents. 
If you're a person in the business, you might be using Excel, like we're looking at here. You're the person that writes that gnarly calculation in the top right, and I don't even know what that is. Jeremy has even less of a chance I have no there. Idea. I have no idea. So that might be you, and that's not fun to come into work and necessarily do that every day. Or you're a person that thinks and can write SQL in your sleep. I personally can't. We're not even going to talk about him. But that's not always fun either. You might enjoy writing the code, but then you hit execute and run, and then all of a sudden you have all these failures, and now you're just troubleshooting. Right? And, and that's not to say that what we're going to talk about can't be integrated in with SQL, but just think about these concepts for a minute. Or you're using products today that take a lot of training or are difficult to use and maybe not intuitive. So we're really here to kind of discuss our, the Tableau approach to that. <clears throat> SQL, really? SQL, Jeff? Anybody SQL writers? I thought SQL was part two to a movie. <laughs> right? You are going to bring up SQL? Come on, man. All right. So <clears throat> Gartner's reported that 80%, if you look at an analysis, 80% of the time spent doing an analysis or, or working on a project to get ready for the output, 80% of that time is spent on getting the data ready, bringing it together, cleaning it, joining it, all of those things. Now, let's just bear with me for a minute and let's think about that. If you're given an hour to work on a project, you have a meeting coming up and you need to do a presentation for that. 48 minutes of that one hour are spent getting files, bringing them together, doing calculations, doing a whole bunch of work, and then you have about 12 measly minutes to actually take the data, put it into some charts. For me in past lives, I would just copy paste and hope I got to the meeting on time. And you left really no time for analysis. And what we're really trying to do is flip that on its head so you have 80% of that time to do your analysis versus preparing it. Right, 80% of the time to eat the meal. That's true. <laughs> so with Tableau Prep that we released in April this year, and we've come out with new releases every month, we're really trying to help users, that means anyone, whether they're in the business or IT side, get their data ready for analysis. If you have things like integrate your data with joins and unions, you need to aggregate your data, pivot your data, and clean it, Tableau Prep is likely an option for you. There's a whole lot of other vendors downstairs that you may be using today, and that's great. But if you're also fulfilled a gap that you need, we're here to talk to you about that. So before we <clears throat> dive into where we're going, let's just take a moment to talk about where we've come from. Right? Just imagine all of the steps necessary for you to get you to cleaning this data ahead of time, right? And I know this resonates with a lot of you, or some of you at least in here, right? We have this data profiling, ETL, ELT, right? Get it right. Is it one or the other? Who is it? How about identity resolution was a hot, uh, <clears throat> master data management. Remember those golden records, right? That was in the basement somewhere that you had to go and dig for and bribe somebody with banana bread just so you can get that set of data that you could work with? Right? So this is the type of stuff that we're talking about that we've gone through so far. You know, really, what's old is what's new again. We're just relabeling, rebranding some of these different processes, perhaps, that's going in. Right? Instead of integration, we're now calling this data wrangling. Perhaps you saw some of those shirts that are out there. Data profiling will probably remain profiling forever. But there's the MDM, which we're now calling curation. And the management, these are the catalogs that are being produced out there today. Right? So just getting a little bit more comfortable with what's new now. Right? So there's a lot that has changed. The scale, how we're scaling this information, the scopes that we're applying these technologies to. Right? And especially the technology, which is why we're all here, right? for this awesome technology that we're working with. And of course, over time, everything has changed. Look at, we've got warehouses to data lakes. Right? Gigabytes to petabytes, we heard about all of that information, how much data we're consuming, SQL <clears throat> to non-SQL, right? And these mostly have stayed the same, but what has definitely changed that I hope can resonate with most of you is it's no longer just uh, an IT-led initiative. It's a collaborative initiative, right? This is what Tableau started with. We worked with Tableau Desktop, 
to work together with all of this. So it's no longer just resides in one part of the organization. It's a shared responsibility. And that access has now become more available, especially with PrEP. So specifically, we're really trying to bridge that gap. Bridge that gap between people who have a need to get data ready, and then just do the analysis, do the fun part. Do the sexy stuff, right? And it's really flipping that 80-20 roll on its head. All right. Jeremy. Oh, so we're going to, we're here we do are. You want, should we do a demo? Should we have him do a demo? <laughs> yeah. We don't want to watch PowerPoints all day, do we? Yeah, OK. Well, so we'll do some demos. OK. So let's set this up here. Uh, let's do a demo. <clears throat> as, as I'm starting to get this here ready, I just want to say a couple things about my good friend Jeff Black here. We're really privileged to have him. Jeff is a SC uh, manager. He manages um, a lot of, uh, a large team for the entire uh, Eastern Seaboard. Okay? What are you so doing? What's happening, what that also means is that he was heavily involved with this prep product. He worked with development. He took feedback from you. He took feedback from the alpha, from the beta, from the community, and he was able to work and translate all of that to get these products that we're looking at here today and what you saw in the keynote as well. Okay, so I just want to say this is awesome that we have Jeff here because he's been so important. He's going to help with this demonstration, right? Because I'm not going down alone. I just want to say right now. If you do that again. And Jeremy's <laughs> been here eight years, so tableau, so don't worry. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. All right. All right, so we'll Get start. Get into it, Jeremy. Come on. We'll, we'll start with the demo in here. By the way, is this the first time anybody's seeing prep? All right, uh, so here's something I just want to let you know. How is this the first time you're seeing prep? We had some keynotes already. What have you been doing, partying all night? <laughs> Come on, this is the first time? All right, all right, I didn't mean to call you out on that one, I'm sorry. <laughs> so here's, here's prep, right? So what we're looking at right here is what I'll call the splash page, right? This is where recent uh, flows we'll talk about have been created. On the right-hand side, you'll notice something very similar to Tableau Desktop, a Discover window where you can get started and tutorials and resources. And on the bottom, some sample flows, just like sample workbooks exist with Tableau Desktop. All right, so we'll connect to some data, and we have a scenario to work Yeah, so with. here's the scenario. <clears throat> so just bear with us so you kind of know where we're marching to, so you have that mental picture, because we know everyone's not used to the data sets we're going to talk about. So if you are in a company today, and your job is an analyst or a data steward or an IT professional, who has been tasked with getting some other company's data that you're looking to acquire. You need to bring it together to see kind of holistically how your company looks with their data as well to see that overlap. Things like we, our company today is a domestic company. They have a global footprint. We want to see if that's a good expansion. How is their profitability going? We don't obviously want to buy a company that's going in the tank. Probably not a good idea for our shareholders. Or do we have a good product mix? So we're going to bring a few files together, do a little cleanup, and then that's kind of where we're marching towards so we can provide that data for other people to do the analysis or ourselves. All right. Jeremy. So here we go. We'll start with that. Under the connections window, very similar to what you've seen in desktop, you'll see a lot of the latest and greatest of your flavor for a connection. If you don't see it here, you probably will in the very near future. Remember, we do very regular releases, so most likely the connector that is in desktop will eventually make its way in here to prep as well. I thought perhaps, as Jeff was mentioning, we'll start here with an extract, Jeff. Yep. Because that can be kind of tricky sometimes. All right, so the very first thing that we're looking at here, Jeff, is I get the data. Here's how I look at it. I connect, I'm looking at some data. Maybe you can. Yeah, so a, a few things I want to talk about. If you're going, if you're an IT professional, you're going into or a business user against Hadoop, we do offer data sampling. Pretty important so you don't bring in a lot of that big data, but you can also bring in all of the data um, as well. So just know those options are out there to kind of get you started without having to push everything through the pipe, per se, as you start building out your process flow to integrate your data. Right. That makes sense, right? IT professionals out there probably love that idea, so we're not going to like bring down, turn the lights off just by moving some data. Yep, you got it. All right, so that's terrific. So just this is a, a nice kind of beginning, but we have these steps that we can add and this is really the window that we're going to work in. Up here in the top, it will be the flow. I'll refer to this as the flow. This middle section here will be the profile of the data, and the very bottom will be the, the raw data that yep. you can look at as well. Okay. So 
This is one of those WYSIWYG, right? What you see is what you get, man, this is it. This is the only window we're gonna be working in. We're not gonna leave this, and you'll see, hopefully, I can impress upon you, it's just dragging and dropping, maybe some right-clicking along the way, right? Just the way Tableau likes to do it, as they've done with you got desktop it. and server. All right, so, uh, Jeff, the first thing I think we'll do is we'll bring in some other data in here, right? So let's bring in another file. Let's do the first thing. Here's that company data that you mentioned about. So I'll just open that up. And now on the screen on the left-hand side, you can see there's a variety of tables that are in here. And what we'll do is we'll just bring that orders table, right? That's that superstore data that I'm sure you're all familiar with. And I can drag and drop it on here, or I could just, what? I have options just pop up. What do you want to do? Union or join, right? So here, I'll just start off with union because it sounds fancy, and I'm hoping Jeff will explain that a little bit more. <laughs> and if you're not familiar with unions, it's basically taking files of similar types. You have customer name in a file, like I mentioned earlier, customer name, product, product, and you just basically stack them on each other. So if you're that Excel person that's copy-pasting values, essentially that's what you're doing if you're an IT professional or a, you know, you've been around SQL a while with the hands, you know, you're going to be right at home with this. And it makes <clears> sense. Look at the icon, right? Stacking one on another. So Jeff? Visual and direct, Jeremy, yes. Visual and direct. That sounds, that sounds good. The, this checkbox here, show only my mismatched fields. I mean, right, this is important so, because... So here's a critical design key. Not only do we want you to be able to do these things, some of these complicated steps or, or, or scenarios, really a key pillar in Tableau Prep is being able to validate what you're doing. It's one thing to be able to do it, but then we also want to help you see that the impact of when you do something, that cause and effect. So what Jeremy here is doing is saying, hey, if I have mismatched fields, that means my first file has something like profit. My other file has a, a name like profitability. It's not going to match those two automatically. So we need to be able to fix that problem. So I'll do that <clears throat> by just by dragging one and just drag it and drop it right on top of another. Jeremy, you mean you didn't, you didn't want to create a calculation there? I don't want to create, Jeff, I don't want to create, I don't want to do a calculation. Who wants to see Jeremy do a calculation? Jeff, I don't want to do a calculation. Anyone? Nobody? All right, we got a few, Jeremy, do a calculation. I want to see you struggle. We're going to do, we're going to do a calculation here today. Jeff loves to surprise me during these sessions, which is a lot of fun. So I'm going to just create a calculated field, Jeff. <clears throat> uh, okay, and so this window looks familiar. Yeah, while he does that. So. Another pillar is we don't want you to have a completely different experience if you're new to Tableau Prep and you've been using desktop a while. So a lot of the functions that you know and love from desktop, things like date parts and string manipulation are in here. If you're a little more advanced, probably regex expressions you're going to want to attract to and possibly use for certain scenarios. Now things you might not see at this point are table calculations and LODs because they really happen at a different period of time in desktop from when you're dragging and dropping fields. However, we will talk about that a little bit later. Terrific. So all I did was just start <clears> to type. <throat> Tableau automatically provided the fields that are available to me, just like we did with desktop. Really appreciate at the bottom how valid I am. I'm, I'm valid. <laughs> you are, Jeremy, because I don't no. trust you doing calculations. I'm valid at Tableau. And then that's it. And then I can just hit save. And so now I've just added my calculation that's <clears> into <throat> yep. my union, right? Something's not in my data. I knew right off the bat. We'll just put it right in. Can you do that merge again without creating a calc? Uh, yes, something like, uh, well, here, look at We've got this uh, order ID and order transactions. I'll just do the same thing. There you go. Just drag and drop. Once again, merged. The rest of them, let's just, we'll leave them alone. How's that sound? Yeah, a lot easier. Okay. So that's our first <clears> step, <throat> right? We've seen some data. We've now uh, added some data that's into our visualization here, into our flow. Let's add a step. Let's start getting to the meat and potatoes of it, right? Let's get to the jambalaya aspect <laughs> All right. of it. Let's start. Come on, Jeremy, our, speed this along. Our, our data a little <laughs> bit more here. All right, so I have down here in my profile section all of these different fields that I would like to work with. I don't know, what's a good one to start? Like, we did that. What was the keynote, the email thing? Start an email. So, data roles. In the keynote, for all of those, or for all of you that missed it, that Jeremy said. Yeah. Um, we, we talked a little bit about data roles. It's already available in the product. We talked about custom data roles. Another pillar beyond just being able to do these exercises that I mentioned, being able to validate what you're doing, kind of a quality check, is to be able to make it simpler. If we look at email addresses, Tableau, make things easy for me. You should be able to 
fix things for me as best as possible. So data roles for emails and URLs and geographic fields like city, states, and zips, because if we look at city, and we have the Seattle in there, it's, or rather state, and Seattle's in there, it's not really a state that would apply. If we drag that in desktop, we can't apply the latitude and longitudes, and you're gonna end up on something called Null Island if you've been around Tableau a while. So with email address, as Jeremy's gone in, add a, add a data role or assign this, and we have logic built into the product to automatically identify areas of concern. So I'll do exactly that to look for those concerned areas, right? So from, <clears throat> I just change that, that role to email, look for the validation, please prep to show me all that's wrong with these different data, the data that's in here. You know, I can just scroll down and just see, you know, I can see some weird data, Jeff. I think you. Would you I, what do you have? In there's here? a what ghost calling. We have a ghost phone, right? here. Yep. So what would I, What is this? Uh, well, so the story goes: Mural's Restaurant. If you haven't gone, you need a place to go. Maybe consider there. Or if you've gone on a ghost tour, um, there's the ghost at Mural. So that restaurant has a little table set up with a bottle of wine and some bread. And <clears throat> as the story goes, this, this gentleman had a pretty prolific house here in New Orleans. And he was a pretty heavy gambler, put his house up on the table one night and lost it. So he's never really left that scarred moment in spirit, per se. In spirit. And now the so, spirit. Did is, you fix our email, Jeremy? I did. All I did was click within the data itself. Right? Okay. This is what we want to do as laymen, right? Cleaning up the data without having to do heavy requests. So all I did was just put in, put the at sign, the dot com in there, hit enter, and now... The ghost can receive, I don't know, an email, I guess. <laughs> Jeremy, the ghost can't receive emails. Jeff, we're in New Orleans. Ghosts get, did you do the voodoo tour around here? There's I did ghosts. not do the voodoo tour. Does anyone do the voodoo tour or a ghost tour here? Yeah. yeah we have a couple. You're yeah. a fan, okay. See? So ghosts. <clears throat> ghosts can get, uh, we have it. Ghosts can get emails. Validation. I don't, I don't, I don't believe it, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. I'm just going to make my way across the data set just kind of logically. And, you know, dates are kind of a big deal. Can we talk a little bit about dates? Sure. Okay. So a lot of people that are new to Tableau Prep see the dates, and they don't see the laundry list of all the dates. Similar to numeric values, if you're a desktop user, just to kind of make the associations, we're just displaying it continuously here to kind of really help you understand that volume of records associated to your dates or numbers or metrics, et cetera. But Jeremy, would you please show the list? So we can change that by going from <clears> that summary to detail, and now this looks a little bit more regular to yep. me, right? I understand all these dates that are in here. What I don't understand, Jeff, is what's the dealio with the, uh, the blue marks here? The little bar chart, the viz in the data pane? Yes, the viz oh, in the data yeah. pane. So we, our developers decided that instead of giving you a scroll bar, which is virtually useless, let's put a viz, or a viz in here to help profile the number of records that we're looking at. So as we scroll down to some of the higher volumes of records in the bottom, you can see that we have data in 2051 that Jeremy's ghost has put in there. Right. So I can just easily come through and just filter this stuff out yep. without having to write a calculation. Without having to write a calculation. Right, so I can just come right on in, choose this range of dates. You know, I like to be uh, efficient and just here, we'll just double click here, 2019, hit enter, and then update all of that. So here's a little plug for our ideas forum and our, our product team, us later. Please let us know your feedback. We come out with releases of Tableau Prep every month. That's a little ahead of the pace of uh, server and desktop today. Things like uh, these easy peasy, as some people like to say, filters, easy. date ranges, et cetera, weren't available in the early beta stages. Then we tested it and people said, make this easy for us. Don't make me write a calculation. Save us time. And I'm going to keep harping on that a little bit. The whole goal is to allow you to do these things and save you time. All right, so let's move on here. We'll say something like, oh, I saw up there. Jeff, let's work with customer name a little bit. Okay. Customer name? Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> Similar to, you know, think about the smart analytics or that, that scary world of an AI concept per se. You know, customer names, you might have people fat fingering key in CRM systems, you need to clean that up. How do you know that Michael and Mike Burnett is the same person or not? How do we make that easy? So with smart edits like group and replace on pronunciation, common characters, we're trying to easily identify and flag 
things that might match based on those algorithms so you can then scan the list and determine, Jeremy, please click one. You're being a little lazy here. Got it. Thank you. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Easily scan where do we have possible connections between two people. Now, is it going to get it right every time? Likely not. That one's surely not. Demo gods are not with us. Um, but there are instances where common names, common characters, pronunciations should be grouped together and at least help you get through that list faster. Otherwise, you're probably hunting and pecking or going to um, some other lookup file to actually make that mapping. All right, Jeff, let's keep looking. I like that clean function that I saw earlier. So let's talk about, let's work with the states, right? I've got some different marks that are in here. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, because you don't like writing calculations, Jeremy. Let's make it easy. Things like common characters. If you're doing joins, you probably want all uppercases to be able to do a join between two fields. So instead of writing calcs, left, right, mids, looking for strings, we can just use these clean steps to get rid of punctuations, get rid of numeric values, make everything uppercase. It's really easy for me to do this, so I'll just do this and we'll just remove punctuation and just like that. I'd rather have you write a calculated right. field for the entertainment. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure you would, but for the time saving that you mentioned earlier, this is a much cleaner way of getting you got it done it. for sure. All right, so we're just going to continue <clears throat> to show some of this. This is, I hope that you're seeing what the value that you're with the prep that you can do as you're starting to work through and cleaning your data. Is this resonating with anybody? Is this making sense? Is this like, yeah, okay, a couple of yeses and stuff like that. And then we'll keep, uh, we'll do some, I think Jeff's gonna take the audience out for jambalaya at the end of this session, so that's really good. <laughs> I did promise the other session jambalaya, I'm sorry. One of the things, Jeff, I saw earlier, let's say for instance, here, I'm just gonna click on region, and I noticed that these fields are turning blue. Mm -hmm. Can you help me understand that a little bit more? Yeah, a lot of, feedback and a perspective is when I'm looking at my data, when I'm trying to understand matches and quantities, I don't want to have to create data validation steps. And what, we, what he's done here is he's selected the central region. And if we look at a field like category, we can see that we have proportional brushing, which I just call highlighting in simple terms, to show us how many records for office supplies, in this case 22%, are associated to the central region. So we're able to get some validations of our data, do a little analysis in this pane, and that'll continue through different fields if you would continue to control select and go through the list. I think that's, I think that's pretty crucial, uh, as you can see, just kind of scrolling around, how you can see all the different areas that are uh, associated with one another. I could choose another one, I think, of what you're saying. So I could choose like office supplies and mouse over this like Oceana and what you're saying 56% of those values reside in that Oceana. Correct. So we're doing analysis and we're, prep. Why not? Without even using Tableau. Yeah. I've used it for that. That's pretty good. So we can see our data. Okay. See and understand our data, Jeremy. We can help people see and understand data. We, we should coin that. It's, that's already that's we, our mission, we, we Jeremy. It's already should, taken. You've like been that. here at Tableau eight years. What happened? Let's do that. Let's coin that. Obviously, you're not getting a good review this year. One of the <laughs> things that I thought that I enjoyed seeing here, Jeff, is this keep only aspect. So what you're telling me is that I can start to clean the data, and then I can start to just make this very specific to this one region in this one area or something of that nature. You got it. So that works out, I think, fairly well as well. Let's add some more information into our scenario. We're talking about looking at a global situation. Should we buy the company or not? So let's bring in some additional data in this instance. And perhaps we have this Excel file. We have some target information that we could use. So I'll bring that in. And in true Tableau fashion, there is a quick preview of your data that you're going to look at. You can see the variety of colors to identify each different data set that's in here. But Jeff, here's something that throws me every time. In Tableau, when I'm wrangling the data, trying to get it all accurate, here, let me just expand this out one step. Look, at, this is not the way we like to see data in Tableau. No, it's not. Ideally, you want to see more, less columns and a lot more rows. So in this case, all of your months going out to the right, which Jeremy thinks is the perfect spreadsheet because he sent them to me before, mm -hmm. um, we need to actually pivot that data. If you're an Excel user, you need to transpose that so you can get it into the right structure to make things easy in Tableau so it's drag and drop as opposed to a lot more work. 
And so in desktop, <clears throat> so right, I got to go through. I'm going to do a quick click and then a control click and then another click. Jeremy, it's easier in here. Okay. Go ahead to the clean step, that little plus sign, and add a. This guy right here. You yeah. got it. Add a add a pivot. Oh, I didn't even see that. So okay. Oh, so oh, this makes it much smoother, right? So now what you're telling me is I'm just going to come in here and then just move all of this data over and pivot the data very easily this way. Watch this, right? Ah, that's very smooth and clean, by the way. I can see what's happening here. I'll just rename this. What was this? Dates? Is that right? I think. Work on your spelling. So there you go. There's a lot Boy. of people up there. What did you have for lunch? I had, there was, a, there was jambalaya. <laughs> jambalaya. <laughs> Excellent. OK. So now I have my data is now pivoted at this point. So we're comfortable to use it. So what did we do earlier? We did, um, oh, we did the uh, union before. So why don't I take this guy, and this time, let's do a join. Why not? So I'm pretty comfortable, right, with the join. You get in two data. It's a, a common key, essentially. You're trying to match up the records. Then you can pull all that different, um, oh. Jeremy, uh, for you, or Jeremy, for you, just add columns, one file to another. And Jeff, they're, um, what's happening here? What did you do? No matching records found. I don't understand. Je uh, well, Jeremy is giving you a warning. I have a lot of, uh, we have to fix this here. Did I, uh, did I do something wrong? Is this, no. this is a disaster? What, let me, I'll just delete this and start this. Don't start over, Jeremy. Don't jump in the Mississippi. I don't want you going, um, hold you back from the okay, edge. All right, well, there's a lot of people here. So if you could see, you have different icons above your clean step. Go ahead and just for a minute, right click on that and just give that a name, said fixing data. For you. Okay, fixing. Okay, you got it? Yep. Okay, this will fix it? We want to add, that's not going to fix it. I just want you to know that that's where you fix data okay. because you'll forget. I'm, I'm, you already I'm, did. I'm sweating. All right, go to the, um, there's a little icon in there, Jeremy, with a little filter, a little funnel. Go ahead and click that. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And now when you're in here, one of my favorite features of this product is the changes pane on the, on the far left. So this is what I like to call oh, the yeah. time machine. You got it, Jeremy. Click that, please. Thank you. Speed it along. Um, so in here, we can see that every single thing we've done, we've edited the ghost name. And if we click each of these, we can see the data, the data changing in the pane. And you have the filter at the bottom. The part a lot of customers tell us about this is they're able to audit and kind of understand what's happened. They can take these requirements and give those to the other uh, IT team, give them as their requirements, as opposed to sitting in painful meetings with Word docs open, saying, what's your requirement here? What's this? What's that? Just really expedite that and make it a much faster process. So <clears throat> I have basically a step-by-step -step of what I've done. You got it, step-by-step. -step. So I have this? An audit trail, a recipe. So if I remove that mistake in my recipe and I go back <clears throat> to my join, oh my. So that, that's it. I don't need to do a new ticket request or anything nope, like that. You're good. Come over here. You're good. Uh, oh, what are you doing? I love you. You're so fantastic. You saved the day. No. <laughs> you saved the day. Use prep, hug a friend. That's how this works. That's fantastic. Keep going. Let's, but let's talk a moment about this join screen because this, there's a lot of information on here. What's happening? Yeah, so with joins, we know that's one of the most complicated things you do. It's the scenario where you get in desktop. You have a file that might be an Excel file that's 1,000 records, and it's something that's 100,000 records. You join them, and all of a sudden, the data blows up, and you have a couple million. You don't know what happened. Performance goes bad, and you just have the wrong answers. So what we've tried to do, as I mentioned earlier, with PrEP is not only enable you to do these exercises, but each step of the way validate what you're doing to help you demystify what's going on with joins. So for example, in the, in the pane on the left, the top, we're applying Tableau with machine learning and identifying fields with common characters. The appropriate join keys, in this case, country. We could see on the right, well, on the left, we're doing an inner join. On the right, we're, these are the fields or the values within the fields we're matching on. Like a union, we can actually click on the little checkbox and say, show us the mismatched values so we know if we're losing something. And in this case, in the little record count, so in prior products and prior worlds, if I'm writing SQL, I would have created a little query to give me row counts of what I'm excluding, in this case, 12 records. I don't really want to drop those records. What are they? Or 40,000 records from the first file. 
That's a problem, right? Right now I'm only including 20,000 in the green fixed field or data source and 48 from the second one. It's helping me demystify that when I do an inner join based on the values that I'm joining on, I can kind of start working my way through this even if I don't know this. Or as someone that does know these inside and out pretty well, I don't have to write those validation steps to have to figure out, or oh, am I getting the right row counts? So it's kind of helping me and saving me more time. Jeremy. So essentially, it sounds like I've got a mismatch in here. And what if I change my, let's see, let's go, let's go to our left join, right? Because I want to use that left table. With the Venn diagram. The records, yep. And I feel like the misspelling is in here, right? Uh, what is it? Is Columbia, is that true? Yeah, we don't have a match in Columbia, Jeremy. So it's Your glasses are on, thank you. Sorry, right in here. So if I just come in <clears> here, <throat> make a quick change by what you just said to all of us in here, we can easily make those matches up. I've got my left join. Look, it's doing a quick a recalculation of all that data. Here it comes. Now you can see what's in, what's fixed, what's not, and the total number of records that are in there as well. Yep, and now we've fixed our join, and you can see we've also audited and tracked that change. There is a little tab next to settings that says changes and one thing we've made. So we're trying to also keep that kind of audit trail for you so you don't lose that and people know what's going on, especially in the case that Jeremy leaves tomorrow and he built this and now I have to take it over. I can kind of see that process that he took. Right, and that solves a big problem, right, in a lot of organizations because now I can leave a legacy behind, not only as a cook, but also as a <laughs> The Jeremy process. How many people have one of those in your company? It's the, the Jeremy process, the Bob process, the, the monthly process. Right. None? Yeah. yeah. You're all lying to me. Come yeah. on. Because, all yeah, of you should have hands up. Right. So this helps, will help eliminate that right now. Yeah. The next best thing to do, what we typically do, is I have to now take this up and send it to you, and you have to review, open up the Tableau, and make sure all this is taken care of, and it yep. looks good, and ready to get out to the masses from there, right? So is that something I want to do here, or? Well, first, Jeremy, let's just open this data in desktop. Let's validate that we're on the right path to do that analysis for our Acquisition target. Acquisition, so that's really very smooth, right? Because yeah. we integrate nicely with products. So here we are, preview in Tableau Desktop. So amazingly, I don't have to send this to you, and now I don't have to waste your time with all of this to so give me a quick validation. I know some of the questions that exist that are out there. I can just open it up in Tableau, give it a quick QA, just a quick test, right, before it goes out there. Is there, <laughs> gonna, is there gonna be a problem if I'm on an old version? <laughs> Jeremy, you need to upgrade your desktop version. <laughs> I hope you're not in version seven. So Still. Let's, that's actually a fairly good point though that that yeah. came up, but let's talk about that in a minute. Here, let's bring in something like, what were we doing, countries, and we'll bring profit onto color, right? Because we're merged all this data together. We're trying to figure out what we're gonna do with these companies. Um, well, clearly the U.S. here, let's just exclude that, right? Maybe this will help uh, drive some decisions, I don't know, that are going out there? Yeah, now we know that we have a pretty good footprint of uh, positive areas across the globe that this company acquisition would bring. A few areas that we probably want to document and report back in the analysis just so we can maybe negotiate that a little bit. Right. And so the whole point of this is that we're saving time. I mean, we've been goofing around, seriously, here a little bit, for a yeah. little while, but in 30 minutes, we're able to clean up three different data sources and look to see what it's going to, the final jambalaya dish that's going to look up in here in a Tableau Viz. And talk to a ghost, according to her. And talk to the ghost at the same time. Okay, let's bring this down. I'll just minimize this out. I'll take this. So now that I'm confident that this is going to work, right, I can release this to the masses. And so, Jeff, let's talk about how we can do that. Yep. So currently today, back to the pillar of being able to integrate your data, being able to validate it, smart, direct, and visual ways is being able to be heavily integrated with things like Tableau Server. So today, adding an output, you can publish your outputs to Tableau Server or output as local files, whether it's CSV file, whether it's Hyper or TDE. And I talk with a lot of customers that are in banks that have a hard time, not a hard time, but a, a process to upgrade. And they might be on 10.2 or 10.3. And in the past, Tableau has always been pretty version sensitive on what you're looking at, or what you're using at least. So with TDEs, um, even if Jeremy being on version seven, that he obviously is, when his little desktop opened, um, 
just because it says 2018.012 or 3 as of September, right. we can output files from this to an extract and you can open it in 2018, or rather 10.2, sadly for you, 7.0. For the 7.0. Because so we can have been around that. a while. So I don't have to have you know, a heartburn over something about my versioning with the prep going into you got the it. desktop into the server. You I got think it. that sounds terrific. <clears throat> and here are the steps, by the way, just to show you, it's just you can either save the file, right? I'm sure many of you want to just save it to a file, right? And by the way, also publish it up to a particular server. Nice and easy that way. I'm not using tab command, right? The less I have to do with any kind of coding or anything of that nature, the happier that I am, right? Which is the happier the rest of us data stewards out there would like to be as well. You got it. Okay. It's bridging that gap to really flip that time you spend doing things that we can try to take care of as fast as possible so you can then do the fun stuff. Jeff, that's most of the stuff that I wanted. Is there any other top things that I, that I missed here? Well, there is one, Jeremy. I just don't trust you to do it. What, is it? what are you <laughs> going to do? Oh, I'll step as aside, the, step as aside. The, head chef, the sous chef, the head <laughs> chef, clearly is what's taking place here. So I think the most common thing a lot of people run into is aggregating their data. They bring data in at different levels of granularity, and they really need to get it to the same level so you can properly do a join. And with aggregates today, or with the, LO, the LOD calc that you oh, love to do. The LODs. If you want to know about LOD calcs or level of detail calcs, talk to Jeremy after. Who's the LOD fan out here? Who, yeah, we who got thinks a LODs are complicated because there's squiggly lines in different brackets and yeah. That's exactly, Jeremy for sure right? because so he doesn't know what to do. You're going to show me not to use an LOD. That's right. So let's say we want to add a branch. We want to create an additional flow off of this. This might be a situation where we want to aggregate our data to a, a customer 360, a, a product view, because today we're looking at all the transactions. And we might have a product table, and then we have another table for costs. And we want to know what are our product sales, transactions, and associate that back to a cost table. And I think on the stage, we actually showed, what was it, California had 90 billion people in there, and right. it's really just, I think, 89 billion. Right, right. Um, <laughs> in Boston, it's a lot of World happy series. people today. Um, so we go to aggregate. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and bring in country for now to keep it simple. And we can look for our sales field, bring that field in, the roll it up to a country level. So again, we're trying to get rid of all the details and bring everything up to a common level of granularity. Profit. And in this case, we don't want to just do a sum. Maybe we want the average profit. So a lot of those things that are in desktop for um, aggregations are in here. Was that some clapping or a bottle? Clapping, they're clapping for you. <laughs> no. Quantity. <laughs> wow, Jeremy. All right. Total quantity. So what we've done is just aggregate this up. Now, if we were really building this out to a, a country product view or a country customer view, here are our metrics that we've rolled up because we need to sum or aggregate those. We will help you with those by defaulting with sums. But then maybe it's an order priority or let's say a product. So now we'll have our country and product level. Now we can join that back to a cost table or something else that would have that level of granularity. And in this case, I will go ahead and remove that field. But for that LOD, fixed, sum my sales, fixed, right. total quantities, et cetera. Right. Instead of building out three calcs, we get this question a lot like, well, I'd really like LODs in here. Essentially, you're just aggregating your data at a specific level of detail and then joining it back to something else. I especially like how you can join it back to something else or, I don't know, just have an aggregate table, right? How many people request just the aggregate of that data that's out there as well? Just right, really quick, quick and dirty, just to get that done as you illustrated and by the applause earlier. <laughs> you got it. Before, okay. So what's next? So that sounds really good. So does this, is this resonating? Does this make sense? Because it's the, that 80% that Jeff is saying with the time, trying to save that time, flip it on its head, be disruptive again, the way Tableau was all those years ago when we first were introduced to it, right? Because we're just trying to save that time. And does this do everything that you want? Probably not. Does this cover the majority of the data cleansing that you would like to do? Do you need to you know, learn some giant behemoth product or something or write code? No. 
And that's the reason why Tableau has taken this initiative to do this. Jeff has worked so hard with that dev team to get this done. So this is some fun stuff. I'm, I'm hopeful that we have showed you a lot of that here today in our demonstration, and especially Jeff making me do calculations on the fly like that. That's a lot of fun. Unplanned, it really was. We have some, <clears throat> um, uh, this is a repeated session, uh, the second one that's not out here, but there are still some other sessions that are out there. If you're more, if you're interested in some other uh, aspects of Tableau, I believe there's a hands-on training that is also out there. Uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, Tableau Prep as well. Okay, so what we'll do for the remainder of our time here is, uh, is uh, we'll, we, can, we can end early so you can get to the next section. We'll take Q&A. We don't want to, just want to take that away. So if anybody would like to have some Q&A for the remaining of our time, I think we have like five minutes. We'll uh, just make your way down here. Uh, towards the front. Towards the lower end of the bowl, so but if people you don't could, get bowl rushed. Before you do that, if you wouldn't mind looking at this screen, please don't be afraid to fill out. If you could just look at the screen, if you fill out your form for, for the evaluation, just, take, just fill that out on your app, and on the screen will help guide you to make the right decision on what to put in for this session that you attended here today. All right? Jeff. Yeah.